FNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m., 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And we got a mixed market going on right now. We got some retail sales data. We got weekly jobless claims out at 830 as well. Right now, you get the S&Ps negative by about four points, trading at 4467. We look at the NASDAQ 100, negative by about 42 points, 15,454. All the markets charged higher to the upside to end the day yesterday. Uh, not even to end the day, from about noon Eastern time, the markets just skyrocketed higher. You take a look at the S&Ps early yesterday, you're talking about a price point of 44.30. We finished the day at 44.75, and you see the pop that the markets have gotten on that retail sales and weekly jobless claims data. You're up about seven points from where you were at 8.30 on that data. Dow in positive territory, catching a bid at 8.30 as well. You're up right now by 15 points, 34,714. And the Russell is flat after catching a bid as well on that news. Right now trading at 22.30. Crude, still above $72, but you make it above $73 yesterday. Technically on the session, you're negative 39 cents right now in crude. Natural gas, how about it? They're talking about natural gas in the dent uh, as usual. Man, look at this run natural gas has had. Watch out. You talk about from $2.50 in April. You talk about at a price tag of $3.73 on August 19th. That's less than a month ago, folks. And uh, we're up another $0.05 cents today in natural gas to five fifty one. dollars Back to the short-term charts. Gold and silver trading lower today. Look at that acceleration in gold. We got gold yesterday. You spiked to almost 1810 this morning. We're down $33 in gold trading at 1761. You got silver down 69 cents today right now. $24 we were at. Did we make it to the Yeah, we made it. We'll call it $23.99.5 rounded up. We hit $24 on the dot last night at 10 o'clock. And just like that, you actually dip below $23 in silver, a full dollar move right there. Just the overnight session in silver and notes and bonds getting a little bit of action on that retail sales data. We got some lower price and higher yield right now. We're talking about a yield in the 10 year 1.343%. I mean, look at these moves in the 10 year, right? Tuesday's action on CPI data, we're up to 133.23. By the time trading starts on Thursday, we're below that level. At 133.01, you're down 11 ticks. And as I said, you're up about four basis points right now to 1.34% on the 10-year. The 30 years up, excuse me, 30 years down, 24 ticks, 163.03. And we jump over to the volatility index this morning with a little bit of divergence in the market. We were above 19 until we got that retail sales data. We're going to get into that in a moment. Right now, you're trading still pretty elevated in context of where the VIX usually is at in, on a historical basis. You could make the argument that uh, this time in history, not like many others in history, pushing to an elevated VIX of 1867. All right, let's get into the numbers. U.S. retail sales unexpectedly jump in sign of resilient demand is how Bloomberg puts it out there. And uh, it was a beat when they were expecting a decline. Overall retail sales climbed 0.7% for the month of August, following a downwardly revised 1.8% decrease in July. Uh, excluding autos, sales advanced 1.8% in August, the largest gain in five months. The market was looking for a 0.7% decline overall, and you had forecasts ranging from a 3.3% drop to a 1.1% gain. So it comes in pretty close to the upper threshold of what anybody was thinking in terms of a surprise there for retail sales. Now, jumping into one of the parts of it, uh, and so as it stated, right, if you take out uh, excluding autos, sales advanced 1.8%. Now, what's remarkable, jumping over to the CNBC article, the headline number would have been even better without a 3.6% monthly drop in auto-related activity, excluding that sector. That's where you get to the 1.8% number. 3.6% uh, drop, so that really putting a hurting on the entire number. It would have been 1.8%, quite a number indeed. Uh, Getting into some of the others, with fears rising over the pandemic, shoppers turned online. Non-store sales jumping 5.3%, a little bit of a pushback to online. 
excuse me, as I got lost in where I was there. Non-store sales jumping 5.3%. Furniture and home furnishing saw a healthy 3.7% increase. So much for everybody furnishing all they could uh, during the shutdown. General merchandise sales increasing 3.5%. Electronics and appliances saw a drop 3.1%. Sporting goods and music stores fall 2.7%. The number overall reflected a more resilient consumer with sales up 15.1% from the same period a year ago. September last year, you know, I've talked about it many times, yearly comps not really important in the context of what this market is pricing in for future growth, et cetera. Uh, what we also got in there is we got initial jobless claims, initial jobless claims out at 830 as well. That number coming in at 332,000. Market was looking for about 322, at least as the Bloomberg survey puts it. Uh, pretty close to in line in terms of what you were talking about. When you take a look at it on a graph, you can see the trend is definitely downward. We tick up from the low we had last week of 312,000 initial jobless claims. You're dealing with 332,000 this week, pretty much as expected in the market. And uh, interesting action in terms of where we go from here, right? Yesterday, some serious strength. We were talking to our man Kevin Hinks. We talked to him yesterday as well. We're going to talk to him again coming up after this current break. He was talking about you put the S&P on a nice 10-day, 30-minute chart. Now, take yesterday's action off of this chart, and it's pretty well defined. But as we know, we talked to Kevin yesterday, quite a run to the upside. Uh, we'll see what he has to say in terms of this market. Was that strength? Are we going to give it back in the overnight session? NASDAQ 100. I mean, you look where we are. Interesting that we're talking about basically we're right back to almost where we were at the open pre-market yesterday. Now, there had been some negative action in the NASDAQ 100 as well. Didn't start as early as the other indices, as in you had the S&P selling off right out of the gate after Labor Day. NASDAQ 100 held up pretty well until actually Friday's action is when you kind of really fell out of bed without catching a bid. Now, I'm just going to zoom in on about the last 24 to 36 hours. I mean, look at where we are in the NASDAQ 100 and look at the move we had in between that time. You are back to within about 10 points of where we were 28 hours ago, 530 in the morning on Wednesday. You trade down to 15,307. You get a move of more, over 200 points to the upside. Uh, and just like that, though, we get some red with negative 55 points. You look at the pre-market action. You're talking about basically pushing lows. You are just about seven to eight points above the pre-market lows we had prior to that retail sales number. It'd be interesting, right? We got the CPI data on Tuesday, and all indications were that that was great data. We back it up to Tuesday. There's your acceleration on the CPI data, and the market sells it off. Interesting to see how it takes this number in terms of getting a strong retail sales number. We get a decent initial jobless claims number. The market does spike higher, but nonetheless, you're still talking about an S&P negative six points. You're talking about NASDAQ 100 negative by 52 points. The Dow basically flat, positive by six, and the Russell uh, flat as well. Gold really trading lower in a big way today, down about $35 as we talk about 1760. Taking a look at where I have, that is just the Fibonacci run that we had since August 9th, right? That was that huge acceleration to lower prices of 1677.90. We trade up to 1840. We're bumping up to the 50% retracement right now, 1758 or so. You're trading 1760. If you go to the 618 of that phone move, you're talking about 1739, about $21 south of where we are right now. All right, folks, stay tuned. We come back after the break. We'll be talking to our man, Kevin Hanks. We'll be talking a little market action. We'll be talking a little bit of fundamental news. And uh, we'll be talking about what they'll be talking about coming up on Fast Market today. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world, represented in the Fibonacci sequence. These special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. 
Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative five points right now. We get the NASDAQ 100 negative by 53. Dow and Russell barely in the positive. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, TD Ameritrade Network, live on Tiger TV with Fast Market. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, and the team breaking down the day's market action. They walk you through hypothetical trades. They manage those trades. They roll them if they need to. They talk about defined risk. Uh, Kevin Hinks, we got some economic numbers this morning, man, and uh, we got a mixed market. Good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, the markets were pretty much soft to start the day. Uh, now they're, I would call them relatively unchanged or, yeah, other than the NASDAQ. You know, the, the NASDAQ's going to be a little heavy today. I think Facebook is going to weigh on it slightly. So a couple of the fang names, but we have a Dow that's looking slightly higher now. All things considered, this is going to be pretty close to an unchanged open, buoyed by a really strong retail sales uh, data, Tommy. It's you know, they, they were looking for down across the board. They came up big numbers across the board. Now, uh, the retail sales number is always a little bit volatile. And last month's retail sales data was all revised a little bit lower. But still, these beats are much, much more than expected, even with the revisions, Tommy. And it's pretty cool that uh, one of the big misses in there as well is that they had uh, autos, right, really pulling that number down. It would have been like 1.8% um, if you take autos out of that number, which is some serious strength. It's amazing some of the misses that the expectations are. And we're just in such a volatile period, Kevin. It's really tough being a financial analyst and, and trying to peg these data points when on a month-to-month -month basis, as you say, we get some volatility and it's really hard with the amount of variables, I think, going in. But when you go from a miss in terms of looking for a decline of 0.7%, you come in at an increase of almost that same level. And if you take autos out of it, which has really been volatile, talking about 1.8% growth on retail sales when the market was looking for a negative number. Surprising, the S&Ps are still negative. Uh, I talked to you yesterday and we were looking at that 10-day chart on a 30-minute basis. You had us pull it up on the Think or swim platform. Uh, I got it up there now. A little bit of strength yesterday, Kevin. Uh, we came back up to almost the highs we had on Tuesday. What did you think of that action late in the day after we talked to you yesterday? I thought it was really healthy for this market to uh, bounce off those lows and move higher. And frankly, Tommy, I would expect a little more continuation of it, especially based on this retail sales number. Now, there, there may be different leadership, as I think the banks and financials will do extremely well today because yields are higher. So I think I, I, I would be um, not a big seller 
here if I was trading the, the, these markets. I think after that little comeback y- y- yesterday, there might be a little follow through today, especially you've got quadruple witching tomorrow, Tommy. So that usually has a upward momentum on stocks or at least a firming momentum. Should be a big volume next couple of days. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm watching this market pretty closely for a little follow through here. And it's pretty cool, man. Recently, I mean, the openings have been uh, some fireworks, man, as we've gone. You know, we've come into the open, whether it's higher or lower, but we've gotten some action uh, when this market opens. And we got about nine minutes to go until we open today, of course. Uh, we got a lot going on in terms of some of the equities, Kevin. It's interesting. I was reading an article today talking about so many equities across the market actually down 20 percent from their highs right now. Um, a lot of the indices probably being at highs have to do with the tech stocks and the fang stocks like we've talked about. We've had a little bit of a pullback from those highs, but man, the last three or four months, I know you guys have talked about it on Fast Market, just the valuations that they've risen over those three to four month periods. Apple, Microsoft, Microsoft comes out with a $60 billion buyback yesterday. Um, yeah. Just interesting. How do you look at that in the market where you do have you know, some equities that you wouldn't even know it if you just follow the S&P or the NASDAQ, Kevin, but you got a lot of equities that are down pretty significantly from their all-time highs. Yeah, you. I mean, people talk about, oh, waiting for a correction. Well, you're basically in a rolling correction right now as we speak. So, you know, you had sell-offs in, in several of these names off the highs. Not all of them, obviously, so you've got to be a little um, subjective here, but you, you're, you're getting dips. I mean, Apple was you know fairly significantly off its high. It got as high as 157 it hit 146 yesterday so you're talking about apple 11 dollars off its high you're talking about amazon at you know 3400 in, in chain 3475 that's a hundred dollars off its uh, off its highs it got down to 3400 about 150 dollars so you still got a lot of names especially in some of the fang stocks that have come down off their highs. There's plenty of deals to have your say. Even some of the retailers have come down off their highs, Tommy. That's what we're looking at today. We're going to look at uh, Target and Walmart today uh, with with what like Folio. They'll do a presentation. So we're starting to look at the retailers today, Tommy. I mean, talk about some strong companies. Obviously, a divergence, man. Target has just been a stock through the roof. Uh, you talked about some pullbacks from 267. We have the high on Target, 244. We're back to one of the stocks that jumped out at me. I know you talk about it, Kevin, talking about pullbacks. Strong company like FedEx, you're down from 320 to 256 on that equity. So it is interesting when you get into some of these sectors, like you talk about um, the rotation. Maybe that rotation has been into some of the FANG stocks. I mean, Netflix through the roof, of course, um, up to 615. You've backed off $30 from that. And you talk about Apple, man. It always blows me away. 16.5 billion shares, something like that. You just said it had an $11 move in about six, seven uh, trading days. You're talking about 100 and what's that, $175 billion in market capital capitalization wiped out um but they gained that market capitalization in a period of five or six days leading up to that all-time high as well well kevin we look forward to the conversation target walmart two great companies we look forward to it as always man and uh we'll be listening at 11 o'clock today we appreciate the update as always oh always a pleasure tommy have a great day Thanks, Kevin. Take care, man. Folks, tune in every trading day, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Kevin Hinks, Alex Coffey, they do an outstanding job. I uh, love the comparisons they do. They talked about some of those shipping companies earlier. They talked about the gaming companies, Take-Two and Activision, earlier in the week as well. Today, they're going to be talking about Target, and they're going to be talking about Walmart. I encourage you to check out that program. 11 o'clock every trading day, folks. If you haven't checked it out, uh, an amazing program. You trade options at all. I tell my friends about it. A great way to get educated. Um, to get it done. And as we're on it, if you're on the Thinkorswim platform, folks, if you're not, they are a sponsor. Okay, we're biased. Head on over to the front page of TFNN, download the demo account. You want to really get into options. The education area that Think or Swim and TD Ameritrade has, okay, they have courses in here, folks, that are incredible in terms of what you can do and what you can do basically about any single topic that you have. Okay, now, of course, that's going to give me problems, but I've done these courses, folks, okay? And uh, I encourage you to check it out. They have courses on every aspect of options in here, um, whether it's at the TD Ameritrade 
website itself. Uh, it's an outstanding resource that used to cost thousands of dollars as they break through options and the program itself as well. All right, let's check around to some of those FANG stocks as we look for the market open today. A little bit of weakness in the NASDAQ to kick things off. You have Apple down about half a dollar. Uh, again, remarkable market capitalization moves for a company that's two point something trillion dollars. Uh, even a 50 cent move downward, eight billion dollars wiped off market capitalization. Almost tough to wrap your head around. Microsoft shares this morning, you're down a little bit as well, down 51. I mean, if you're dealing with higher yields, which you are, Ken was talking about, you're going to see the banks have potentially a good day. There's Bank of America trading higher in a decent pop. Uh, JP Morgan trading higher to 159.14, up about a dollar. Uh, that is going to weigh on some of the tech stocks. That is going to weigh on some of the FANG stocks. But we got all the markets pretty close to unchanged as we come into the opening bell. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back in three minutes. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got the negative uh, prices pretty much across the board. Dow only index in the green right now by about 20 points. S&P is negative by seven points. NASDAQ 100 negative by 66. A little bit of negative action right out of the gate 
on the open and the Russell negative by about one point right now at 22.28. Yeah, we are. NASDAQ down about 80 points as we jump around. Gold contract down $37, basically at session lows of 17.57 right now. Notes and bonds down about 11 ticks, chopping around basically where we've been. You look where we are in terms of since about 9, 10 a.m. this morning. So you're talking about the last 20 minutes or so. Uh, you have the tenure just chopping around. We're sitting at about 1.34%. All right, jumping back to just real quickly, because uh, I did pull up the education, um, TD Ameritrade, I just swear for an example, and as I say, folks, they are a sponsor, okay? I am biased to the definition of it. But this is the area I was talking about. When you head on over to the education tab, within the TD Ameritrade platform as a customer, you're talking about a seven hour course that they have here on trading options. Okay, you're talking about options, strategies, a virtual workshop, everything in there. Now, you, when you jump into some of these courses, okay, you can see that they break down each and every part of it, whether you're talking about just simple how options work basics, okay, the basics of pricing, and then you get into the more advanced strategies, whether you're talking about uh, income, whether you're talking about cash secured puts, whether you're talking about spread strategies, all of these in there, folks, okay? When you click on it, you get a full presentation of where you are, you can jump through the slides. It's a great education, open to all their customers. I encourage you to check it out if you're at all interested in getting into options. These courses, if put into a book or an online webinar, used to cost, as I said, thousands of dollars. Uh, thankfully now, information more readily available. And of course, TD Ameritrade has an interest in getting you educated to trade options, as they are one of the best brokers, if not the best broker out there, especially when it comes to options, uh, but just an outstanding education. Not many customers are probably uh, aware of even that education and what it exists on there, just on their website. All right, jumping back to the markets. S&P is barely in the red right now by about two points. NASDAQ negative 61. Let's jump around to what else we have going on in the market. And I'm going to go to uh, the article that I was talking about, talking about a little bit of a rotation. Stock markets undergoing a slow motion deterioration with pockets of shares down 20% or more is how CNBC puts it. Now, just some statistics they have in here are pretty cool and something to keep in mind. About 15% of the big cap S&P 500 are more than 20% below 52-week highs. A much larger, larger swath, though, when you get into mid caps, 30% small caps, Almost one out of two companies that are small caps are 20% or more below their 52-week. Uh, you get into whether it's talking about industrials. I took a look at FedEx, right? We just talked about American Express. 3M, you talk about retailers, Kevin had talked about. Look at these retailers. Nordstrom, Gap, Abercrombie, Kohl's, Ross, all of them down between 16 and 41%. Luxury retailers, you're talking about 14 to 20%. LVMH, Movado. Tapestry, carrying, home builders, 11 to 26 percent for some of the four biggest out there. Big Pharma down between eight and 15 percent. Uh, just something to keep your radar on, folks, because what that essentially means as well, as I stated, is that you got some big action in the FANG stocks carrying a lot of these indices when you have so many smaller companies down in dramatic fashion. And if these companies end up being priced a little bit hot, for what the market deems appropriate, and as I say that, all the markets are catching a bid. Only NASDAQ 100 negative by 24 points right now. Uh, and look at this action. We just had a low print of 15,420. You're up 50 points just like that. You get the S&Ps positive by three. We were trading coming into the 830 numbers at 4460. S&Ps just now 4475. Let's jump over to the VIX and see how we're trading right now. 1833 as this market catches a little bit of a bid. Okay, jumping back to other stories out there. Speaking of equities that have had good runs recently, uh, Tesla, Kathy Wood selling, unloading $62 million worth of shares. Uh, that's 81,600 shares of Tesla yesterday at a closing price. Uh, it's interesting that she needs to manage her book and tell everybody every trade she makes. That's one of the um, arguments against uh, a trader like that when you have to expose yourself to other people basically being able to front run you if you start to build a position or vice versa, if you're gonna get out of it. Uh, but the fund has sold over 350,000 Tesla shares in September so far, 350,000 folks. All right, that's, I think that's like, what is that pushing? That's pushing 300 million, something silly. Um, at a price tag of 300, yeah, you're talking about 7, 14, 21, 23, yeah, $250 million worth of Tesla shares, a quarter billion dollars worth of Tesla shares almost. When you add that all up, I believe, do they have the number? Yeah, 350,000 shares sold at 700 bucks is going to be 
$240 million of Tesla shares. Uh, that is quite a move in a big way in terms of what she's been doing. And she added uh, Robinhood, which was quite a surprise. Unloaded, yeah, $200 million worth of Tesla so far. That was as of yesterday. Um, and I think she unloaded more. Adds $10 million to Robinhood. Um, I mean, she's buying dips for these companies. And she just has, I think, areas of value for some of these companies and there you see the acceleration yesterday and some of that news you're down two tenths percent today um i'd be careful of this one robin hood uh trading at 41.75 she loves crypto in her funds and if you love crypto it would make sense that you love robin hood because robin hood is tied to crypto the scary part is that if they start to face some competition and they can't make all the money in the world off of doge trading it's not exactly like a regular brokerage where you have the resilience and the reliability of that customer base. I mean, they are making so much money off of crypto and they're making so much money off of Doge within crypto that that better give investors some pause there. Uh, and they're going to face some competition in terms of retail trading ability in that sector in terms of crypto, which they dominate in every aspect of it right now. Okay, what else do I got up here in terms of jumping through? Speaking of crypto, why not? We'll jump to this story. Jay-Z, uh, be careful out there in the crypto sector, sector folks. Uh, Jay-Z, it's interesting how the legality of this is all going to play out, though, with people fighting over the rights of NFTs. So you got Jay-Z and Damon Dash um, fighting over the NFT rights to the debut album. And what it talks about in here... So let's see. We're going to get down to their exact... Oh, here we go. The dispute ban began in June when Rockefeller sued Dash seeking to stop him from auctioning off the copyright to Jay-Z's debut album, Reasonable Doubt, as an NFT, which represents ownership of the digital object on a blockchain. Rockefeller says that while Dash holds a one-third stake in the company, it owns the album itself and has no legal right to sell the NFT. Um, and what it just speaks to here is that buyer beware, too. You know, you're going to have, if, if Jay-Z hadn't stopped that suit, right, maybe he sells the NFT, and then maybe you're the one that buys it, but then guess what? Jay-Z says he didn't even have the right to sell you that digital picture. This this whole area is just ripe for, for misdeeds and misactions in terms of people selling things that really have no value unless somebody else says they do, and at some point, People just might say, no, they don't. Um, but you're seeing it play out in court. And I imagine you're going to see this play out all over the place in terms of people deciding who owns what right when it comes to something that we didn't even know existed as recently as, what, a year ago in, in most uh, casual circles, let alone not that long ago, even for the most brilliant people in technology out there in terms of selling non-fungible tokens on a blockchain. Uh, remarkable. But that's going to persist. All right, folks, come on back. We're going to take a quick break. We got the S&Ps negative by two. All the markets pretty close to where we started right before that economic number. Always interesting. We'll take a look at those numbers before because we had some big beats in the market. Just kind of takes it in stride. S&Ps negative by one. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by seven, NASDAQ 100 negative by 71 points right now. Dow in the green. I'm going to jump over to a little bit of inflation talk. Inflation depends where you are in the country or in the world. Uh, but in the country, they're taking a look. Depends on where you are in a big way. And that depends on real estate prices in a big way in terms of inflation. Uh, you take a look at where we are. So there's a few graphics I want to take a look at here. The first one this Bloomberg article has up here is it's talking about in the pandemic, some cities like Atlanta and St. Louis seen prices, seen prices rise at a much faster pace than San Francisco or New York City. All right, we got Atlanta and St. Louis in the blue, and excuse me, Atlanta and St. Louis in the orange and the purple up top. And that's talking about almost 7% inflation, folks. And then you got New York and San Francisco under 4% in terms of in the white and the blue. Uh, the differing factor there, talking about real estate. Inflation in Atlanta was running at 6.6% in August, according to Lager Department data published this week. That's close to double the rate. It is in San Francisco or Denver, where prices are rising at about the same pace as they were before the pandemic. Much of the gap is likely explained by housing markets, which have been upended by pandemic re pandemic relocations and the rise of work from home. Tampa mentioned in there and Riverside, California, some of the highest inflation rates have seen sharp increases in rental costs. An article I read last week was talking about 20 percent in Tampa. Rental prices have gone up and those consist of contracts, folks. Um, that is not going to be a transitive influence when you sign a contract for a 12-month period. Uh, very seldomly are you going to have to drop those rents at any type, any time in the future. While cities like Tampa and Atlanta already had relatively high inflation before the pandemic, uh, and this speaks to it is a factor. Let me see if I cross. Yes, I did. One of the analysts, I believe, they're talking to an economist. Okay. Um, was talking about that there could be a broader impact from migration tents, saying that some of which predate COVID in faster growing cities, there's more spending power to push prices up. It's inherent demand built in folks. When we have people in Florida moving to Florida, whether it's the low state taxes, whether it's just the quality of life, um, that is going to be more demand in that market coming in, obviously. Uh, and then you have the economist at the Bureau of Labor Statistics saying we expect more demand pressure in the Sunbelt regions where population is shifting Towards. Now, I read an article yesterday about New York City. New York City rental prices are going up 30, 40 to 50 percent right now because what happened was is 10 months ago, towards the end of 2020, you had a lot of people signing leases that dramatically came down in rents, okay, because New York City was a ghost town compared to what it usually is. So Manhattan, Brooklyn, um, some of the boroughs out there really had to drop their rents. And now people are dealing with in some instances, they had signed leases for $2,000 a month 10 months ago, and now they're dealing with a $3,000 price tag. But that $3,000 is only back 
to basically pre-pandemic levels. So New York is back, you know, cities are back, they are gonna exist, they're not going away, but it's not like the price increases that you're seeing that were already in place, okay? This was already happening in areas like Tampa, um, where you were seeing these rises on a consist consistent basis. Now you look at the pickup in inflation varies depending on where you live, all right? The black here is in February of 2020 as we come into COVID. The Pink is in August of 2021, last month. So we go from black pre-COVID to pink, we'll call that current. All right, now look where we are. You look where we are, St. Louis, we're talking about, they go. They were already at two, they're at 7%. Houston, pushing above 5%. We talked about Atlanta at 6.6%. Okay, but you see the rise we've had in all of these, pushing those levels there in a big way. Tampa, not on that, unfortunately. Um, and they talk about potentially the level of car use is likely another driver in regional discrepancies, cities where gasoline has a lower weight and local cost of living indexes. So you're talking about San Fran and New York have seen smaller changes. So cities, again, not seeing the inflationary factor. When you talk about that people in cities are not filling their gas tank up to the degree that people uh, outside of that area, potentially in Tampa or et cetera, are. Something to keep in mind because inflation is the hot vogue topic as it should be. Um, but man, it matters where you are in real estate, a big factor. And when you talk about real estate, if real estate is the big factor we're talking about, then I don't see how it wanes because real estate is something you're locking in prices for a considerable period of time. And there's not gonna be, in my opinion, a surplus of houses anytime soon that's gonna push that market down. And that's the only thing that would really crush the rental market is if you had prices. And that's not just going to happen in, in the near future, in my opinion. Uh, and with that, we get the markets pulling back a little bit. You got S&Ps down right to where you were prior to that number. We had a low pre-market at 815, a 4456. We're at 4459. NASDAQ down 75 points right now. NASDAQ 100. We just made session lows. 15,420. You get the down. The Dow had just since it was open. You were up above 34,820. We give up 170 points just like that in the Dow and the Russell, negative by six right now as well. Crude back under 70 dollars, 178, and gold continuing to trade lower. Gold right now down $43. 1750. Take a look at gold. I'm going to put it on a daily real quick. We talked about the pullback of where we are just from the acceleration from August. All right, so we're about $10 away from that 618 right now, which would be about 1739. You put this back. What's interesting is that 1677 low correlated very closely to the lows we got in March, to the lows we got earlier in March as well. We come down to that level. We're talking about the 618 right now. Uh, quite a slide for gold, though. You take this off just for some clarity. Man, that is quite a bar we got going to the downside at 1750 right now. All right, let's jump around to some of the other equities that are moving today. And we're going to talk about Beyond Meat. They get downgraded by Piper Sandler. Beyond Meat, B-Y-N-D is their symbol. Let's see how they're trading on the open right now. Down about 4.4%. I mean, you talk about pullbacks, right? This stock, now it is negative for the year, but that's after being up $100 coming into 2020. You trade up to 221, and you just got a pop from 100 to 160, and we're almost giving it all back, back to 100 on this equity. Uh, they get a downgrade. Beyond is an early leader, but we believe its current all-channel retail momentum lags consensus expectations. Uh, the valuations sometimes are just tough to live up to. We're talking about a company that's valued at almost $6.7 billion dollars. Uh, it's quite a valuation when you're talking about the sales and earning potential right now of that company and uh, getting a little bit of a downgrade down 4.5%. Very, very volatile stock. Uh, you take a look at where this thing has been completely, right? Look at these roller coasters left and right. We got an all-time high uh, low during COVID of about 60 bucks. Actually made it down to 48.18. Uh, but man, where we where we go next on this equity? 100 bucks. Seems all but certain back to that May low with another downgrade. And it's been a straight shot down since about June 30th for this equity. Uh, the Chinese stocks are down yet again. I mean, it just doesn't stop. Alibaba, actually, or was it Tencent? There is no longer a company within uh, the top 10 most valuable companies in the world um, that is Chinese. They've all exited that top 10 because of the pullback that they've had. I think it was either Tencent or Alibaba was the last one that was a top 10 company, no longer a top 10 company anymore. But you got the casino companies down yet again. We jump over to Las Vegas Sands. You're down 3.2%. I mean, the pain just doesn't stop here. We were down to a low of 35 yesterday, makes it back to 38 by the close, and we're down again today. 
and taking a look at that on a daily basis and zooming in. I mean, you just traded from 45 bucks to 36. You just traded off, what is that, 20% in the span of eight days, 20% in the span of six trading days uh, for Las Vegas Sands. And we got Win, W-Y-N-N, -N, down 3% as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back to finish up the show. I'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got some negative action in a big way right now. Some selling in the market right across the board. The NASDAQ 100 down more than 100 points. Dow off more than 100 points right now. S&P is negative by 20 points. And we got the Russell negative by 12 points as well. Red across the board right now. We jump to crypto. Bitcoin trading lower with the market on that little sell-off. We're down about 600 bucks to 47,500. Crude under $71, excuse me, under $72 at 71.80. And gold trading at 17.50 actually made it to low of 1745 uh, as the market just proceeds lower silver down a dollar oh four and uh, how about that natural gas a little bit of volatility continues uh, this market my goodness running from under four dollars August 26th we hit a high of 565 yesterday you got natural gas at 529 and let's jump around to some of the fang stocks as we got some negative action Nasdaq 100 down about two-thirds percent right now s and is down half a percent Dow down a third of a percent and the Russell down about two-thirds as well we got Apple shares right now down eight tenths percent trading down a buck 19 Microsoft shares trading down 
about a dollar ninety five. I mean, how about Microsoft yesterday, right? You trade to a high of almost three oh five fifty at the close. What were we at? Yeah, three oh five, give or take. Uh, just off the all time highs. When you take a look, all time high three oh five eighty four. We make it to a high yesterday of three oh five thirty two on the heels of their sixty billion dollar share repurchase program. Uh, quite a price tag today. You get back some of it with the market, and we'll jump over to the VIX as we wrap up the program. VIX catching a spike to nineteen nineteen. Take a look at this on a longer term basis. Uh, a series of lower lows and lower highs. The recent high back in August was twenty four seventy four. We didn't get anywhere near that on the high we just had. We had a high of 2118, that high, uh, just uh, a few days ago. Right now, though, 1921 with some negative action in the market. Thanks so much for t starting your day with me, folks. Stay tuned. Uh, we do have a replay this hour. Basil's out today. He will be back tomorrow. But after that, it's live, folks. We got Fast Market at 11. We got our man uh, Larry Pezzavento, excuse me, at noon. We got Steve Rose at 1, Dave White at 2 o'clock, and Tom O'Brien, my dad, back to wrap things up from 3 till 4. Uh, we got some negative prices, folks. It's going to be an interesting day in the market with the S&Ps negative by 19. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Thanks so much. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems a